peers back in Boston that the bridge should be located in Kansas City. Now, geography argues for the bridge being built in Kansas City and not Leavenworth and not St. Joe. Geography argues for it. We had good political connections and we had legislation to move the mail uh, over the bridge. But geography argued for it because here's a photograph of July 3rd, 1869. By building the bridge in Kansas City, and it's right by the Broadway, to locate it today, it's right by the Broadway. You can throw, it's just east of the Broadway, you can throw a rocket hit it. By building it in that location, rather than Leavenworth and St. Joe, you are now south of the Call and the Missouri. If you had built it up in Leavenworth or St. Joe, you would have had to build another bridge to get across the Kansas River or the Paul River. So geography argues for it. And that is a tough, tough site to build on. We have six piers on the bridge. The center one is the pivot. Not a drawbridge like this. The drawbridge has pivots. Let's pretend these are the tracks. Trains going across when a boat or a barge is on the river. And the river always had a right of way. River always had a right of way. You would stop the trains. You would open the bridge. Let the boat or the barge cross. And then you would close it. We had guards at each end of the opening on pier number two in the swing span. And they would stop the trains and they would also collect holes if you were walking across it <laughs> or if you had your horse or if you had your buggy. But their main function was to prevent accidents and stop the trains. Sinking those piers was quite difficult. That's six of them. We used caissons, really. I describe them as cones or cylinders or big, oh, reinforced boxes, very well caulked, watertight, braced timbers. And we would lower them into the river. There were guide posts sunk, sunk down into the river and the silt to the rock and big round rings so it would slide down. And we kept adding pieces to it as it went down to break. There were spots, Pier 4, we went down 47 feet in water and silt. Once you get to bedrock, then the divers go down, divers with the diving suits, air, and would water jet a little ditch around it that we would then put rock then clay, then straw, then canvas, then more rock, more clay, and build that up. And then you could take the water, the silt, the boulders out of that enclosure, send the divers down. We had eight divers that we would use to go down. My friend, my assistant engineer and I, George Morrison, we invented and patented, I've got eight or nine patents, all dealing with aviation or bridge building, railroading, ties, rails. We invented and patented a continuous chain loop dredging machine with the buckets that would go down and then to load the rock for the piers. We had to build a little trestle railroad out to it with a dairy to load the rocks and lower the rocks down to the divers to build up the piers. Like I said, that river beat us at high water, ice flows, as late as summer of 68, remember it's done ribbon in 69, as late as the summer of 68, Pier 4, Pier 4 had washed out. We had to move it 50 feet that late and, and of course we did the superstructure was only one track only one track but we built it wide enough and strong enough that as traffic increased over the years we would be able to add another track we poured our own rock from here in kansas city once again 
land. We had to float it out on the river on barges or on flat, flat uh, boats to get the rock to the pier sites. I talked to the American Indians and to the old settlers that were here at the time and asked them, they told me about the flood of 44, 1844, and they showed me the high water mark of 44. And so I built my bridge 10 feet higher than that high water mark. Oh, the celebration on July 3rd, 1869, hot air balloon, 40,000 people came to town, fireworks, a cannon blast, just uh, speeches, just a big celebration. Up to that time, to cross the river, there were four railroads on the north side, three on the south side. You had to unload the railroad, unload the train, load the ferry, ferry across the river, and load the train. How slow was that? How heavy was that? How many times did you drop it on your toe? It's just, by building the bridge, you could cross the Missouri in two minutes. Two minutes. And if you were on foot, five minutes. That made Kansas City the dominant city in the Missouri Valley. 